What's up folks? Antoine from Two Branch Farm. Just want to give you all a quick solar update. So out in the solar shed now. Um, and I am about to add some more battery capacity. Um, if there's one thing that I learned about solar, it's great when the sun is out, but when the sun is not shining and it's cloudy out, you need battery capacity to keep things going. So uh, there's one battery was doing pretty good. Um, but I, under, I underestimated or miscalculated the size of the water pump that's running in the, uh, the greenhouse behind us. Uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's running underneath the deck over there. Um, and a few times I had it run through the night because I accidentally forgot, left it on. But um, also a few times, even during the daytime, we had cloudy days. I got the, the battery discharge down too low, uh, lower than... Uh, what it should which could damage the cells so i got two more new batteries uh, that are just like this this one still runs um, but i'm gonna swap this one out and add two new batteries because i read that <clears throat> online that you shouldn't uh tie new batteries in with older potentially damaged batteries so um, i'll swap this one out and we'll use it somewhere else around the farm for something maybe a little smaller and um, we'll tie these in these are going to be their 12 volt 200 amp hours and uh, we'll tie these in in parallel and so we'll maintain the 12 volts but then we'll have 400 amp hours so now we can store some of that energy but first i need to disconnect all the the battery turn everything off and um, wire everything up and i need to let the charge uh, the batteries come up to charge because I got a new Renogy charge controller. So this is going to give me accurate measurement of the amount of juice that we have left in the batteries. Right now is using <clears throat> what's called the SOC. That number right there it's supposed to be a rough estimate of what's in the battery. But I've learned online through forms and through life experience so far that that number is not accurate at all and they actually tell you um it's just a, a estimate and trust when you say it when they say it's just an estimate it's just an estimate so uh gonna dis disconnect this stuff turn it off and hopefully between today and tomorrow we'll get 100 percent charge and then i can turn this guy on and then set it to 100 percent so we can get accurate batteries Got our batteries in here. Uh, these are all going lead, lead batteries are monsters. And, and when people say they want to go lipo, you understand why. Um, these things are super duper heavy. And I would really, really like to go uh, lipo myself. But out here in my solar shed, I didn't know how hot it would get when the summer hits. And I didn't know how cold it would get because this is not a temperature regulated place. And so from my understanding, uh, the lead acid batteries work out a little bit better. But yeah, these batteries are each like 100, over 100 pounds easy, like 120 pounds, I think each. Um, but um, I think they will do exactly what we need. So gonna get them wired up and then get everything powered back on, use a little bit of the rest of the evening light to start charging and hopefully they continue to charge to tomorrow. All right, so we are done. We have everything all connected. Well, except for the, the battery monitor because I'm waiting for it to fully charge. So um, they were at 85% according to sock when I cycled, cycled through it just now. I know it's not, I know as I was talking about, it's not like super duper accurate from a, a battery standpoint. Um, but, oh, why is it not cycling through now? Oh, there we go. Um, from a battery standpoint, but once it gets into 100% status, it'll go in float mode as opposed to in um, MPPT. So right now it's just showing that it's charging. And so once it gets to 100%, it'll go in the float, which means it's just, if it discharges a tad bit, it'll send some energy to the batteries. But um, once they get up to 100% in float mode, I'll then connect this guy up. So I have the, the shunt installed. I had to do some weird weird stuff. I installed the shunt directly onto my, my bus bar for the negative. 
and um, yep so once that that is good to go I'll connect connect this wire to uh, that white connection down there and then I'll connect it up to uh, my little battery monitor device and then we'll get some better battery readings and we'll know some exact status of how many amperage we have how much voltage we have and i won't be guessing trying to use the soc values up there we are in float mode now so um took to about noon when i came out earlier this morning we were in boost mode so it was just doing a, it was doing a fast charge on the battery banks but um yep so got everything in now now that it is in float mode the batteries should be 100% charged. Um, I have the battery monitor up here. I took like a two by four, um, a piece of two by six cutting that I had and uh, drilled it and just kind of put it up there because it, it's not like something that mounts. It's made to like slide and something that's got these little grooves and kind of clip. So we don't have anything that fancy in here. So it's about as fancy as we get is making a little small shelf with screws and it's, it's not going to go anywhere. But I ran my wire down here and I ran it behind um, the wood and this wire right here will plug in down here where you see that white connection. But before I start doing anything, I will be turning all the power off. And uh, since I have just one hand, um, I'm going to be cutting and then coming back. So we're all wired up now. Uh, all the programming is set. Uh, one thing that I needed to do was I had the battery wire for um, the shunt, the power wire. It's supposed to be tied directly to the positive, but I had it tied up here to the bus bar. So I had to make that adjustment and just put it down here um, right at the battery. And so now we are all tied in. The shunt is tied in to the bus bar right off of the uh, main negative and we have everything programmed for the battery monitor so right now when you see the two up arrows it's telling us that everything is all solar right now that's that's powering the pump uh, that is running so right now we have no draw off the battery bank we have our 400 amp hours and we're all set now from my understanding and someone could correct me if i'm wrong these arrows this up arrow stay up but this bottom arrow could change it can go down which would mean we're still getting solar charge but it's not enough solar to power the load and so it's drawing um, power from the battery bank at that point if both of them are down then that means it's drawing all power from the battery bank at that point point. Um, and we're getting no supplemental solar to help with anything so like I said, hopefully this will now carry us through the night and especially through cloudy days to keep everything going and hopefully we're sized correctly and then we'll get this battery, get another solar uh, solar panel for it and we're going to find a use for it so it doesn't go to waste. So it's nighttime now and we are out looking at the battery monitor. Uh, we see it, the little moon icon is on there. That means we're getting no solar charge. And now when you look at the monitor, you see that it's showing negative. The arrows are going down, meaning we're not getting any charge. Saying that we have 367 amp hours left out of 400. 92%, 34 hours left to run, so about a day and a half. And you can see that it's negative, meaning that it's pulling uh, amperage only from the battery now. So we'll see. Hopefully we can... It'll hold like it's looking like it should, and we'll have about a day and a half. It actually started getting cloudy a little bit earlier uh, today, so uh, we didn't have sun all day long, full sun all day long. So I think we may be okay. All right.